Hi, Isabel. I made a little video for you this morning during the live stream, and I've explained how you can use uh, the exchange between Dash Studio and ZBrush without Gozi with a figure and an item of clothing. And it is quite a complex process, so I thought I'd make a video for you that's a bit more condensed. I'll link to the stream that I did this morning in which I'm showing how to install Gozi, how it's meant to work, and then also how to do this without Gozi. But it kind of went wrong three times and I thought, well, I can either edit this out or I can just record this again just for you. And I decided to do that because it's actually a little bit easier. So um, I'll link to the stream. Feel free to watch it if you have the time. There's a lot of other background information about um, ZBrush and this um, DAS Studio integration. So I'm just going to show you the steps that I've used this morning with a base character. You can also use a, a morphed character, uh, but I'm just going to use my base character here and dial maybe up a morph or something. I'll go and use Genesis 8.1 Tanned. This is just my stream safe product so that we don't get into trouble with YouTube. It's just the base character, but it has uh, it has drawn on underwear so that, you know, the bots are happier about that. But it is the same as loading this Genesis base character here. It's exactly the same. I'm going to go and put some wardrobe on. I'm going to use the basic wardrobe. I haven't had time to uh, install much of my uh, content yet. I've just reinstalled bits and pieces on my computer. And I'm also going to give the character a pause. I believe we used this one here. Yeah, there we go. Now we have a pause. So we can even, if we wanted to, I can now also make it a completely custom character, uh, but I'll leave that to you. So I'm, you know, I'm assuming you're using a custom character and I'm treating it this, this way as if it was a custom character. So in order for, imagine, so I'm imagining, and I don't really know exactly what you're doing between ZBrush and DAS Studio, but I'm imagining that you want to fix some clothing. That's usually the the thing that, that people do with, with uh, ZBrush. And I'm, say, imagine we had some poke through here on the bra and I'm going to go and change it. And for that, I need to have my reference figure in ZBrush as well as the item of clothing in question. You can do that as, with as many items of clothing as you like. If you had like a, the figure and the shirt and some trousers and you want to tuck in the shirt into the trousers, for example, you'd have to have the character of the trousers as well as the shirt. So, you know, use your best judgment. I'm just going to use the character and the top as an example. So. I'm also assuming, and again, you don't have to do this, but I'm assuming that you want to bring the fix that you're doing in ZBrush back as a morph into Das Studio. So you don't have to do it. You can bring in the whole item of clothing without it being a morph. But the way we usually work is we leave everything in Das Studio alone and just bring in a delta. And the delta is the morph. The morph is essentially a change from one thing to another with the geometry staying exactly as it is. So it's that's important to remember because if you change the geometry, say if you subdivide, if you add pieces to it, if you remove things from it, then the geometry changes and as such the morph can't be imported. So that's important to remember. So in order to make this work, we need to fit, we need to turn our both our character as well as the item of clothing we want to export into base resolution. And here's how we do that. So with the character selected on the parameters tab, under mesh resolution, there's this slider here, resolution level, and we need to set this to base resolution. And when you do that, you can see that the character goes a little bit chunky. And that's okay, that's the real resolution of the character. The subdivision, or the high resolution, is something that's implied on the fly to give it the appearance of something much more high resolution. But we can't export it as that because that's not the real resolution of the figure. So we need to do this with both that as well as the sports bra. So same thing, I'll go and switch it to base resolution. There's a tool by 3D Universe that lets you do this with one click for all items in the scene. It's called uh, Scene Tools. Let me know if you're interested, I'll send you a link for that. So those are now base resolution. Now I need to go and export this. So first of all, I need to hide my clothing so that the character is separate. So with the character selected and the clothing hidden, head over to File, Export. And I believe I have a folder on my desktop, which is called ZBrush Test. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to call this one G8 Post. 
and I will export this at 100% um, scale. There we go. I will now go and hide the character. I'm going to go and select the sports bra, which is also in base resolution. This is kind of the more important object that we're working with. And I'm going to go make that visible again and then go and export this as well. And I will call it bra. Notice that both the character and the piece of clothing are in a posed position. So that's that's good. I'll go and open ZBrush 2022. And then we're going to import both these items. That's a little tricky in ZBrush, but ZBrush is a tricky program. I don't know how much knowledge you have of it. I'm assuming you know your way around it. Uh, I don't. I mean, I, I do to a certain extent, but I'm not an extensive user. I, I really just know my way around it. So um, yeah, it's it's a complex um, it's a complex app. But I suppose you know that, otherwise you wouldn't be using it. Let's go up here to import. That's under the tool palette. And like we do, we would go and import our Genesis 8 character first. Do that. It appears here. That's perfect. So we go and left click and drag her out. Then we go into edit mode immediately with the T button. I like to frame her up. And, you know, we can see that is in fact uh, the, the person. There we go. Perfect. So now with the character in here, we need to go and append the subtool that is the item of clothing so that we can work on that in the context of the figure. And that's a little bit uh, tricky. So we go under the subtool palette here, open that up, and this is where we want to append something. And this is done with the append button down here. But it's not going to work right now because we need to import the bra first. So to do that, we need to select anything that's not the figure here. So this is our figure. This is also our figure. This is a tool, actually. This is the figure that we've imported. Let me select the cylinder or something else. It doesn't matter what it is. And when we do that, the character appears to go away. But that's okay because we're just loading the next item into this slot here, so to say. So the tool has changed. And that's fine. We just need to have a slot here. So now we go and import this again on this other slot. And no matter what happens in the viewport, that's just you know, the fun of the ZBrush, really. We're going to go and import the bra. And now it looks like we have the uh, we have the bra visible here, which is now our tool. And um, that's really also not exactly what we want, but that's that's just how ZBrush works. So this is why GoZ is so cool. It just sorts all this out under the hood. So now that's imported, let's go switch back to our character, which now comes back, which you know is awesome. <laughs> so now we can see the character both uh, up here as well as down here in the subtool palette. And now here we need to go and append something as a subtool. And this is how we do that. This is, again, this is very confusing in ZBrush, but this is what we need to do. Append, and then we pick the bra from down here. I don't really know why it's so inconvenient, but that's just that's just ZBrush for you. So I'll go and append that, and now I have both the figure and the bra here, which is awesome. So depending on which subtool I now select, that's the item that I'm gonna. Uh, that's the item I'm not gonna work on. I don't know why this disappears. It doesn't always happen. Uh, you probably know better than I do why this happens. Let's just let's just imagine we can see both the character and the um, and the. Oh, there we go. And the subtool here, because we want to really see both, don't we? Uh, there we go. Perfect. So I've just shift clicked them. So the darker object is now. Um, the one that's that's not active and the lighter object is the one that's active and we can go and start uh, sculpting on this So maybe make this a bit wider uh, or you know create whatever morph we want hold shift down to smooth things out and i'm, I'm i just trust you know uh, better how this works than i do but um, that's basically how you make a how you make a change on your sub tool and that's really um, all we needed to do. You keep working, and eventually you're ready to export this. So if you if you if you've done your work now, you head over here to the top right where your changed subtool is in the in the um, in the palette here, and then you head over to export. So I think actually you can click on it. Click on the subtool you want to export. Just click on it, and then there's this uh, this palette that comes up, and there's an export option in here. That's not ambiguous. The other way would be ambiguous. So this is not ambiguous. You 
export this and I'm going to call it a bra change, for example. And this is an OBJ down here. Make sure that says to, that's set to OBJ. Hit save. And then we're ready to go back into Das Studio and pick this change up as a morph. So with my sports bra selected or the item of clothing, we head over to file. No, sorry, edit object morph loader pro. There we go. And that's going to come up with a little dialog box that lets us choose the morph file that we've just exported from ZBrush. So grab that, which is bra change. And down here, if you open this little context menu, there's this option, which is called reverse deformations. And we need to enable that. So just right click it and select yes. And what this does is essentially lets Das Studio reverse calculate any changes that are in the morph that were applied to the base character and the base item of clothing when we exported it. So what this means is that the A pose of the base character is essentially no deformations. That's the zero pose. That's, you know, that's what the character looks like. But that's usually not what we export to ZBrush. We export either morph version or post version or both. And that means there's the the base pose plus some additional deltas, like an additional morph that's happened. And when we make our change, that's totally fine. When we bring it back, we just need to tell that studio, hey, this wasn't a base character in the A pose. If there's been any changes from that, this needs to be set to yes. And we do that and then we hit accept. And then, well, actually, I'll leave it here. We should get this message, which says uh, loading morph change uh, created morph successfully. If you see something else like, whoa, well, the geometry didn't match, then that means the export of this item wasn't base resolution, or it means a change has happened on the way from ZBrush back to here. So if I had subdivided the item of clothing in ZBrush and exported a higher resolution version, then this isn't going to work. So it needs to be the same vertex count and vertex order when I import this into here. And then Lo and behold, with this selected on the parameters tab, I have this morphs category here, and that has a slider now that I can go and move. And this is how the item of clothing then changes. So this is exactly what I had dialed in uh, in ZBrush here. And this slider, you can go and you, you shouldn't go into the negative. You can go to this little uh, gear icon, hit under in the parameter settings, and then go and say, hey, we don't want anything negative. So minimum is zero, maximum is 100. And then you can just go and move the slider. You can also rename this and you can do this multiple times. So if you have other changes that you want to make for other poses or for other body shapes, this is how you do that. And that is how you do this whole thing without GoZ. I mean, just for completion, maybe I will go and uh, I'll maybe just bring bring this back uh, as it is. And I will also go and change this back to high resolution now, just for completion, because I just wanted to show you how um, that's high res. And then the character is also high res. Oh, that's already high res, perfect. So um, just for completion, I'm gonna go and uh, create a new document here in ZBrush. I don't wanna confuse anything here. Um, GoZ, and I'm sure uh, they will have it working again at one point. It used to work on the Mac, but currently it's just not working. GoZ is really, really nice. So it, you have, you just um, select the whole figure and this is just in preparation for when it works again. I'm thinking positive here. <laughs> I'll go and say file send to ZBrush. And then if you, so you have to select the figure with the clothing attached. It doesn't matter how many items of clothing there are. If you just hit that, then a little dialog comes up and it says export with deformations. This is essentially uh, saying, are you exporting the post version or do you want to see it in the A pose in ZBrush? If you disable this, then it'll end up in its A pose. When you enable this, then we'll see the, the post version of the character. So I'll leave that on and I'll uh, disable export at current resolution because this would now send the high res version over. We don't really want to do that. We want to send the base res over. And then we'll go and say accept. And then seemingly nothing happens, but ZBrush is working hard underneath the hood or under the hood rather. And it has um, uh, it has given us the character and the two uh, sub tools here. So all we need to do is uh, left click and drag this out. 
go into edit mode with T and this is now our figure with clothing already in place which is which is super awesome so let's go and uh, maybe make a change to the to the shorts here which means you have to select them and then uh, maybe we'll make the hips wider I just you know something just so that we have a change see this is a beautiful change here now and maybe make this uh, smooth as out of it something don't know so this is say this is our change nice and easy so the, the beautiful thing about working this way is that all we need to do to send this back over to Das Studio as a morph in no matter what clothing item we've dealt with here all we do is we hit go z and the rest will be just done like magic and this is really nice for quick things if you do this time and time again you just keep ch interchanging things between Death Studio and ZBrush it's just completely automatic you don't have to worry about the the whole um, import export settings and all that you can give it a name here uh, this is about the basic wear shorts now you can give it a name if you want it to, to be something else and all you do I think is uh, hit accept and that's it so now on our shorts under morphs we have the zbrush morph and that now behaves exactly like it did uh, in the manual method it was just so much faster and it's also more foolproof i find because there's just not uh, not so much that can go wrong in this process i hope this helped and i thought uh, yeah i'll just i thought i'd make you a smaller condensed version so i don't have to you know i don't have to do all the outtakes that some things went wrong during the stream so uh, feel free to watch it it's still entertaining and there's a lot of uh, background info that i'm giving but you know just a short and sweet version just for you thank you so much for buying the session with me isabel it is uh, i hope this uh, helped if you have any other questions just you know do let me know bye bye